Hey, Olivia. I missed you last night. You said you were feeling sick? Yeah, I'm sorry, Hattie. I really wanted to see you celebrate your birthday, but I just came over so sick. That's a shame. Are you feeling any better? Well, yeah, much better, actually. Oh, great. Charlie and I are going for a walk near your apartment today. Maybe we could meet up. Oh, I don't think I'll be able to today, Hattie. I've got to tidy this apartment. It's so untidy at the moment. And I have my parents visiting next week. Not even for an hour? We could get coffee. I know how much you love coffee. I do, but no, thank you. Is everything okay? Sure, what do you mean? Well, I've noticed that every time I want to see you and Charlie, you only want to see me. You know how I feel about Charlie. I do, and he does too. He doesn't know why you're the only friend of mine who doesn't like him. He's tried so hard with you, and he's still trying. It was his idea to go for a walk close to your apartment today. He said that he felt bad that you missed out on my birthday celebrations last night, and he wanted to make sure you felt included. He suggested that, Olivia, not me. Well, that's very sweet of him, but doesn't change anything. Why? Why won't you change your opinion of him? He's my fiancé. You're my best friend. I want you to be maid of honor at our wedding. I've already made my position on that very clear. And that I was honored that you asked me, but I would have to politely decline. Based on my feelings towards Charlie. Your feelings? Your feelings that he's what? Not a good guy? Yeah, I believe he's not a good guy. I believe he is lying to you about his past. That he has a history of cheating on women he's been with. That he's lied and manipulated his way through life, and I will not stand by and let the same thing happen to my best friend. Based on what, Olivia, you keep telling me about these awful things that he's done in the past. But it's all based on hearsay. Things you heard about him when he was working at a bar that was next to the bar that you were working at. I trusted the person that told me about him. They had no reason to lie to me. And I believed you at first, but when I sat with Charlie and asked him to explain, he told me a very different story about that relationship. He told me that the girl in question was mentally unstable at the time. That he tried to break things off with her multiple times and she coerced and blackmailed him into staying with her. That's all crap, Hattie! No, I don't think it is. Charlie has never once made me doubt him. He has always treated me with kindness and care. My parents love him. He's like a big golden retriever of a man. He wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, I'm sorry, but I believe my friend. I'm your friend. I'm your best friend. And you don't believe me? No, I'm sorry. I don't. You might think he's this golden retriever of a person, but I don't. He's so possessive over you, Hattie. You say that I never see you anymore, but that's not true. I never see you without Charlie there. He doesn't let you go out without him. It's like he doesn't want you to have friends if he's not present. When was the last time I saw you without Charlie present? I don't know. I haven't been counting. Exactly. You don't even know you're being manipulated. Listen, Olivia, I'm not being manipulated. I like having Charlie present. I like having him by my side. He's going to be my husband. But that doesn't mean that you have to change your whole life, your friendships, just to make him happy. Let me ask you a question. Okay, shoot. If you told Charlie today that I was feeling depressed and you wanted to go and see me on your own without him, what would he say? How would he react? Well, he probably wouldn't believe me that you were depressed. Exactly! But that's because he knows you don't like him. He would suspect you were making it up so that I would tell him not to come. Oh, come on! He would hate it because you wanted to do something with me without him there. Just admit it! He's controlling! I don't think he is. And if you don't like him based on hearsay, based on things that you have no idea about, and you can't move on from those feelings, then we have nothing more to talk about, Olivia. I don't think I can be friends with someone who doesn't like my fiancé, who thinks he's some controlling, manipulative creep. So, you're saying what exactly? I'm saying that if you can't at least be civil with Charlie, our friendship is over. Well, if that's the way you feel, then okay, fine. Our friendship is over. I'm not going to change my feelings toward him. That's never going to change. So, I guess that's that. I guess it is. Let me know if you reconsider. The door is always open. Don't wait up. Hey, Hattie. Hey, Charlie. What's up, babe? Well, I need to talk to you. Well, that sounds ominous. What about? It's about Olivia. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Charlie. She just won't change her stubborn mind about you. She's a lost cause. I'd love to hear what plan you have up your sleeve about how we're going to win her over, but at this point, I don't think it's going to be possible. I don't want to talk to you about winning over Olivia. Olivia called me earlier. What? She called you? I didn't even know she had your number. Well, she got a hold of it somehow, and she called me. So, what did she say? She told me some pretty awful things. Oh no, I'm so sorry. No, pretty awful things about you, Hattie. What kind of things? She told me that you cheated on me. What? Yeah. She told me that you cheated on me with your ex-boyfriend, six months after we started dating. Oh my god. Is that true, Hattie? Is Olivia telling the truth? Because if she's telling the truth and you've been lying to me this whole time, then I don't know what we're going to do. I can't believe she called you. I can't believe she would do this. Why would she do this? I don't know, Hattie. You tell me. Listen, Charlie, she's clearly going through something right now. We had this horrible falling out yesterday. I know. You already told me about your fight with Olivia. Yeah, but I didn't think she'd actually stoop to the level of trying to break us up. But you're dodging the point here a bit, Hattie. I'm asking you if what Olivia told me on the phone is true or not. Is it true? I mean... Hattie? Listen, Charlie, I was going to tell you. I really was, but I just didn't think it was a good time. What happened? I... I... About six months into our relationship, I got a call from my ex, Cody, and he said he was feeling strange. Strange? Strange how? Like, he said he had this big yelling match with his parents, who he'd been staying with after our breakup, and they were kicking him out of their house. He was all messed up. He needed someone to talk to. And he said that I was the only person who would understand what he was going through. Because I knew how much of a nightmare his parents could be. They never liked me either. Hetty, I don't need context. I just need to know. Did you hook up with Cody? Yes. But it was only a kiss. It was more of a peck, actually. And he was the one who instigated it. I I didn't think it was a big deal, and because we were six months into our relationship, I didn't want to ruin what we had over a tiny misdemeanor. But I told Olivia, because I still felt so guilty. Olivia was the one who persuaded me not to tell you. She said it was minor, that everyone makes mistakes. She thought it would set a precedent in our relationship, and you'd never be able to trust me again. I don't understand your logic, Hattie. If you were afraid of setting a precedent about lying, why did you lie? I know, it sounds stupid in retrospect. I should have told you. You should have. Because now I don't know what else you've been lying about. Charlie, I promise that's the only thing. I can't believe this. I knew there was something going on between you and Cody. I just knew it. I hate it when your worst fears are realized. Charlie, I'm so sorry. Can you please forgive me so we can move on from this? I don't know. This is big, Hattie. I need some time to think about this. Think about it. What's there to think about? I made a mistake, Charlie. We're not all perfect. But making a commitment to being with someone for the rest of your life means you need to be aware that your partner isn't perfect. You love them for their imperfections. So what are you saying, Hattie? I'm supposed to love you for cheating on me? That's some pretty crappy logic. I can't believe this whole time I've been trying to show you how good a person I am, contrary to what your best friend thinks about me. But actually, the two of you are the toxic ones. I don't think as of right now, I'm comfortable going ahead with this engagement. You want to break up? You want to break up with your fiance over text? Classy move, Charlie. No, Hattie, you're the classy one, hooking up with your ex-boyfriend. I can't believe this. Neither can I. Goodbye, Hattie. Olivia? Hey, Hattie. Listen, I've been doing some thinking, and I feel terrible about our argument. You're my best friend, and I don't want to lose you. Well, you should have thought about that before you called Charlie and told him about what happened between Cody and I. What were you thinking? Were you trying to break us up? Because it worked, Olivia. Charlie has literally called off the engagement. Jesus, he's such a manipulator. No, Olivia, you are. Listen, Hattie, I did call Charlie earlier, but for a very different reason. I called him because I felt guilty about our argument. I thought I could try and patch things up a bit with Charlie. And I mentioned that I still didn't trust him because of what my friend had said about him in the past. Of course, he refused to admit that he had anything to own up to regarding his past relationships, and I said it was okay to own up to things. 
and that we've all done things we're not proud of, and that if he would just own up to me about how he had treated my friend in the past, then I could begin to trust him as your fiancé. But he just refused. And then I said to him that if he can't own up about that, then he could at least own up to you about making a pass at me. What? Yeah, Hattie, Charlie made a pass at me. He tried to kiss me not long after you guys started dating. Is this true? Why didn't you tell me? I just couldn't find the right time to tell you, and you seemed so happy with Charlie. But it compounded my feelings towards him, and I hated him after that. And I hoped that you would eventually work out on your own terms how much of a bad guy he is. But you didn't. You just fell for him more and more. When did this happen? How did this happen? When we went for drinks, it was maybe the third or fourth time I met him. We were all drunk, and he goes a bit touchy with me. And then when I was leaving the ladies' room, he was waiting outside and tried to kiss me. But I said no. I told him to back off, but he didn't. He said he needed to go home and sleep it off. He was drunk, but that's no excuse. I can't believe you never told me about this. I'm sorry, Hattie. I guess I'm as much to blame as he is. No, no, you're not. But how did he know about Cody and me? You must have told him. He must have already known about that, Hattie, because I never told him. I swear on my life. He probably used that information because he was scared that I would tell you about him trying to kiss me. In fact, I threatened to out him earlier. He probably wanted to use what he knew about you and Cody as ammunition to break things off with you before you did with him. So you didn't tell him? No, Hattie, I promise. My intentions when talking to Charlie on the phone were genuine. I called him because I wanted to give him another chance because I believed you that he had changed that maybe, just maybe, he was a better guy, that you had changed him. Because I thought to myself, if Hattie believes someone is a good guy, then maybe she's right. Because you're such a good person, Hattie, but after talking to him and knowing what he's done now, I know I was right all along. Charlie isn't a good guy. He never was. He was just pretending to be a good guy. And you know what? I'm happy he's broken things off with you. Because of the damage he could have done to you. I was losing you to him, Hattie. I don't know how this has happened. A couple of days ago, I had a best friend and a fiancé, and now I don't have either. You still have me, Hattie. I'm still your best friend. I still have your back. Through thick and thin. I'm sorry about everything. I should have been honest about Charlie from the start. I don't know why I didn't tell you about him making a pass at me. It was stupid. It doesn't make any sense to me. If you hated him so much, why didn't you tell me about what he did? Unless you're not telling me the whole truth. When he tried to kiss you, did you let him? Yes. Oh God, when will all this lying end? I promise that's the whole truth now, Hattie. No more lies, please forgive me. This makes so much more sense now. I'm sorry, Olivia, but I'm going to need some time to think about all of this. I don't know where you stand with me. And I certainly can say the same thing for Charlie. I need some time, okay? Okay, I understand, but just know, Hattie... Yeah, I love you. Goodbye, Olivia. After my talk with Olivia, I confronted Charlie about the information Olivia had revealed to me. Charlie insisted that it was Olivia that made a pass on him that night at the bar. I don't know who to believe, but one thing is clear to me now. Charlie and my relationship was broken. There was no trust anymore. I couldn't believe a word that came out of his mouth anymore. As for Olivia and I, we're still working through things. We're not as close anymore, but I do believe her intentions were genuine. I like to think she had my back all along. <laughs>